Now, let's go back to bone for a second. This is an example of aneurysmal bone cyst. And I wanted to talk about it here because, surprisingly, it seems like there may be some sort of relationship um, between aneurysmal bone cyst and nodular fasciitis. I mean, they're clearly different things. This arises in the bone, and it does have a lot of features that are different, but it has many cases of ABC have a fusion of the USP6 gene. And they also tend to have some areas that have a fasciitis-like appearance. So I think it's helpful to, to show them together to remember that. Usually these are lytic balloon-like lesions that kind of expand the cortex of the bone and push and blow outwards into the soft tissue. They have a relatively characteristic radiographic appearance much of the time, so the radiologists usually know that's what they're dealing with. If you do a CT or an MRI, you'll see fluid fluid levels. I don't have images of that uh, prepared to show you, but uh, those are kind of some of the buzzwords. They can occur, they're usually in young patients, the majority occur before 20 years of age, but I've seen them in adults also. And um, they can occur in, in a wide variety of bones. You know, many bone tumors have specific bones they occur in, but aneurysmal bone cysts can occur in lots of different bones. So let's talk about what we're going to see here. And this is a really good example because it's a nice big uh, piece that's relatively intact. The aneurysmal bone cyst is a multi-loculated cystic lesion filled with blood. When we get it and, um, and process it, a lot of the blood will wash out and leave these open, empty cystic spaces. Sometimes, depending on how fragmented the specimen is, you may see just these little cyst walls here, but not see actual intact cysts. So that's okay. This is a good one to learn on because we can show what all of the features are when it's all arranged together. But it's also good to recognize when you just get some strips of stuff like this that, oh yeah, that could fit nicely for aneurysmal bone cyst. So blood-filled cystic spaces, again, the blood's often washed out, but you'll often find hemosiderin and little pockets of hemorrhage retained. The walls of the cystic space are composed of kind of loose fibrous tissue with a kind of edematous background, kind of resembling granulation tissue or fasciitis actually. See how they kind of look like myofibroblasts that are loose and spindled and then there's some dense collagen in the background. Here's some hemosiderin. Okay, the, the space is not really lined by any true lining. It's kind of a pseudocystic space. Um, and what you'll often see in these walls is the really, there's loose stuff like this, but also some very dense collagen that's sclerotic and sometimes actually true osteoids. See here, you can tell that this is osteoid. It's beginning to make bone. And the, um, the bone, the osteoid production often kind of forms these parallel linear arrays in the wall of the cystic space. See here, we've got this like strip of osteoid, of bone production here that's being laid down right along the septa of this, um, of this cyst uh, lining. So in between the cysts, you have these um, uh, septa, and in the septa, you've got the fibrous tissue and also the dense osteoid sometimes being laid down. And it's kind of a, you know, it can really run a range from really nice, well-formed bone um, down to just kind of dense sclerotic collagen, and it kind of can be everything in between. Um, okay, so we've talked about the, the septal lining, the blood-filled cystic spaces. Uh, there's often a lot of new bone production, a lot of reactive woven bone formation in and around aneurysmal bone cyst. Here's woven bone, these little islands of bone. And you can tell it's, well, let's see, this one's not as in focus. But woven bone is little thin collagen strands all mishmashed together, and it doesn't have the nice um, concentric lamellar uh, rings that you see in lamellar bone. So woven bone is always a sign of new bone formation. So it's basically always a, is always a pathologic process. Not always malignant, but it's always abnormal to see woven bone, um, at least as far as I understand. Okay, so the, um, oh yeah, there's one other thing I wanted to show you. So nice example of the, the lining of the cyst, but look at these cellular areas here. You tend to have pockets of cellularity with large osteoclastic giant cells. So you can have areas that are giant cell rich in an aneurysmal bone cyst, and you don't want to confuse that with giant cell tumor of bone. Here's another area right here. See, there's like a collection of giant cells, and if you take one little area like this, it can look quite a bit like what you see in giant cell tumor of bone. And remember, giant cell tumor of bone can have aneurysmal bone cyst formation, secondary aneurysmal change. Okay, so the, the way to tell them apart, there are cases in real life that can be really challenging to tell apart um, and sort out for certainty. But here, the vast majority of the lesion 
is this kind of fibrous and fasciitis like um, uh, loose tissue and bone and um, septal lining for blood filled spaces with only a few pockets of giant cells. So this is aneurysmal bone cyst. If the majority of the lesion is sheets of giant cells and then you have some little pockets of blood, then that would be better for a giant cell tumor of bone with secondary um, aneurysmal bone cyst formation. All right, here's another example or another area where we got some giant cells. See, there are a lot of giant cells here, but they're just these little pockets within the aneurysmal bone cyst. So it's actually quite common though to see um, pockets of giant cells in an ABC. So just remember that giant cells don't always equal giant cell tumor of bone. So this is a really nice example, again, of aneurysmal bone cyst. And um, uh, if you look in the, um, the links, uh, in, if you haven't seen the slides ahead of this, you can go back and review these slides on Path Presenter. Um, the links will be posted with the video. And uh, this is a good slide to spend some time exploring to really get a feel for the classic features of aneurysmal bone cyst.